Hello and welcome everyone. We are here today in Cologne at Gamescom 2019. My name is Nims and today Nintendo presents a more closer look at Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. I'm joined today by two of my good friends from Nintendo of Europe. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? Good. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And Philippa, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Hi, Nims. <laughs> and hi, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. So just a, uh, I think this is a good question to ask right now before we get into this. How are we feeling about our athletic ability today? Are we, <laughs> are we feeling confident? Warmed up. Warped up. Well, uh, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> Ready to compete. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, so what, what shall we start with, uh, Filippo? Well, uh, in uh, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, there are many Olympic events, and uh, a few of them are uh, completely new Olympic events that will feature for the first time in these Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. And uh, uh, we would like to start actually with uh, sport climbing, which is one of the new Olympic events. Okay. Yeah, one thing that's really nice about sport climbing is um, for, um, well, actually for all of the um, Olympic events that are in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, um, you can choose between appropriate play styles. So um, usually, uh, depending on the, the, what is suitable for the game, mm -hmm. you have the choice between um, uh, motion controls with either dual controllers or solo remotes, or you can use to, uh, uh, choose to use buttons only. Ah, okay. We're going to be using dual controllers right. because um, that really captures the spirit of how you would be doing sport climbing in real life. Right. You'll see in a bit what we mean with okay. that. Okay. <laughs> um, so essentially what we will be doing once we can um, select our character is that we will be grabbing onto holds that are attached to a wall and try to reach the highest possible point. Right. Um, so yeah, let's see from the available list of what characters. Go I will with go. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will go with uh, Donkey Kong. You can see it says long grip gauge. Um, every character in each of the um, events has some kind of specialty. Right. In this case, Donkey Kong has a long grip gauge. Okay. Of course. So we, I'm hoping to see some really good bicep action from both of you guys here with these characters, I see. Oh, you can see we were built for that. <laughs> <You were totally laughs> <laughs> All right. All so right. we start with holding our arms in front, testing our biceps, and then by opening our wrist and aiming for a hold and closing our wrist, we grab it. Okay. So we open, we aim, and we grab it. And you can see that... I'm trying to time it well so that it says OK. And by um, timing it well, my uh, energy gauge that is next to me doesn't deplete very much. The more... <laughs> Mine did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and using this heart-shaped hold, mm -hmm. I can replenish my energy. So it's almost acting like a stamina for, for your player. Exactly. So you want to manage your stamina carefully, especially because the different holds are shaped differently so they are larger or smaller which means they are easier or more difficult to grab oh, and it also okay. means that if you are a bit off in your timing you're going to be losing a lot of uh, stamina if you are trying to go for a smaller oh, hold so this. now uh oh uh oh i can see donkey kong was sweating there <laughs> still there you can see the star-shaped hold hmm. so if i get that I will activate the super climb mode. Oh, and whoa! Timing it well, I will be able to whoa. go very far. And now, oh, this was way off. <laughs> we got carried away there a little bit. Yeah, but now I'm trying, oh, I just miss. trying to catch up. So the blue ones are a checkpoint. Okay. Uh, let's go. For so if you one. fall, you will restart from that checkpoint. Yeah. Right. And 50 meters. It's not my highest score, but I'm happy because I beat Filippo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you're also, f you're also getting gold medal there. And uh, to be fair, Filippo, <laughs> look at the size of Donkey Kong's arms. I mean... I managed to activate the super climb. <laughs> uh, this, this, for me, is already a win. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm I, was fine trying, I was trying to make you feel better there, for sure. I'm just, uh, I was just short of bronze, but I'm, I'm totally fine with this one. Exactly, fair enough. Well, let's then do an Olympic event where you're definitely going to win a medal. Oh, ah, okay. Well, let's, well, let's hope so. <laughs> But definitely, we want to go with karate then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and karate is um, played with buttons only, right? Um, because that's simply the the most appropriate uh, playing style for um, what essentially is a bit of a, a, a fighting game. Okay. Yes. 
it works a little bit like fighting games. We have the classic system of uh, uh, attacks versus blocks versus uh, uh, grabs, which are takedowns, of course. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go. I'm gonna go with Mario because I just love the way he looks in his uh, in his karate gi. <laughs> Can I just say I'm loving the rope chain, the gold rope chain that Vector is wearing in this. I like think it's a necessity in this Vector battle. Vector understands very well that you need to have something distinguishing <laughs> in order to uh, really stand out. Headphones and rope chain, perfect choices. So what you can see is um, you have simple attacks um, that can give you points, and you can also try to block them. And oh wow! You can yeah. perform a takedown. Yeah. So fighting game expert Filippo can explain you the strategies behind this. Yeah. So um, I mean, this game can be over very quickly, and I also I have to stop uh, uh, Chris from charging. <laughs> Super. <laughs> oh uh, the game can be o can be over very quickly because you just need ten flags or ten points right. uh, to uh, to win, and uh, each hit that you do is a point. So it's very um, every hit counts. You really need to strategize. Ooh, very right. good. Yeah. And um, when you press um, up or down and do an, a, a, a oh, punch or a kick, whoa. you can see you do an extra powerful one. It's slower, but it also gives you three flags instead of one. And I noticed at the bar you've got a charge bar there. Oh, no. Yeah, I actually... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, I tried to use my uh, super yeah. attack, but... Filippo didn't give me the chance for no. it. Oh, oh no. he's busy charging. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get kicked in the face. <laughs> well, well done. Very, wow. <laughs> for presentation purposes, I will accept <laughs> this defeat on the table. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, makes you feel very good about that's myself. That's it. Yeah. This makes you feel very good. Wow. Though. Yes. You redeemed yourself in this, Filippo. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. There's, there's more events to go through. Um, so for this next um, 3D uh, event, we're going to go with Archery, which is one of our favorite ones. Yeah, Archery <laughs> is a returning event, um, but the reason why we want to show it is because, of course, you can choose to play it with buttons only, mm -hmm. but playing it with um, dual Joy-Con really captures the essence of the sports, just like how sports climbing really uh, replicated the, um, the movement that you do in the sports very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, even more so, this goes for archery. So let's see, who shall we go for? Uh, what uh, are you gonna do? I think I'm gonna go with Amy. Amy? Well, then I will go with Daisy. Daisy, okay. So of course, the trajectory of the arrow can be influenced by the distance to the target, mm -hmm. by wind. For now, we're gonna do a practice round just yeah. to show the ropes. So, so we raise our up. arms to raise the bow. We draw back and then with the left we use our other arm to aim. Very nice. And when we release, we shoot. And That's as you can see, you, you of course aim for the bullseye, but depending on the wind, you can also let it right. I get you. go off, set, off the target. Ah. Practice time, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Okay. All right. So I have to tell you that this is one of Filippo's favorite events. Oh, okay. So he has practiced on this one a lot. Okay, so now when I oh. will. So like this, when I will lose, I will be even more like... <laughs> I love uh, how you both shame. say that and then you both get a bullseye. <laughs> well, I you know that I have to up my game. <laughs> <laughs> the competitiveness still is going out. <laughs> yeah, so we both hit the uh, center of the target, which means that uh, if you do that twice in a row, um, the third shot is going to be a super uh, shot. And this will be for double the amount of points. So in round two, the target is at 40 meters instead of 20 which means that we have to pay a lot more attention to the trajectory of the arrow and also the influence that the wind will have. So nice. I'm gonna aim it a little bit up and a little bit to the left and see where it goes. That was okay, but... Double I'm points. Yeah, but I'm afraid that Filippo is uh, mm. doing well. Did the bad second shot. Ooh, very oh, that's, good. that's music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> so I you, see. as you mentioned there, Chris, you said that I, you don't want to necessarily go straight for the bullseye. You can rear it slightly up a bit or down, well, depending on where the wind direction is. Exactly, and you will see this now with the final shot. So you see we have headwind, which means at 60 meters, it means I have to aim a lot higher than I would right. normally do. So let's yeah. see, I think this should be fine. Uh, actually, Ooh. a little bit too conservative there. <laughs> oh. 
even but if uh, the wind is at the same speed as before, it will still move the arrow much more because the distance is so much. Here we go. That's better. Nice. Uh oh. I think this is going to be very close. Wow. Uh, 74. I'm 70. feeling good wow. about this. So yeah, I trained a lot, but he won. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Is this going to be the summary? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess this is what's going to happen. <laughs> to be honest, we all know that Chris is the more sportsman-like between the two. So you know, like I, I'm not seeing anything. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that anyone is counting, but it's two-one to you right now. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say music to my ears already? Well. <laughs> So, Actually, we're all friends here, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Just to clarify for the viewers at home. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we have uh, also something completely new to show that's not been shown before. Uh, okay. In uh, uh, Marion Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, there are not just these 3D events, which are super fun with uh, multiple control schemes, but um, there are also 2D classic events. If you look at that Tokyo 1964 icon. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and this is a homage to history because in 1964, the Olympic Games also took place in Tokyo. And right. um, with these retro 2D classic events, we're paying a tribute to the history of the Olympic Games. And uh, also, of course, it is a nice way, like maybe your grandparents were big fans of the Olympic Games in 1964. We had some <laughs> heroes back then. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they might also have been playing retro games a long time ago. <laughs> so this, is, uh, this is their chance for, for gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're actually going to start with 400 meter hurdles. And uh, of course, in 1964, there were no motion controls. <laughs> so we go with uh, all of these uh, 2D classic events are buttons only. Okay. Um, and. Uh, in each of these, you uh, control the game a bit differently, but they all are based on very fast uh, button presses and quick reflexes. Right. Of course, we have the classic characters of uh, Mario it. and Sonic. I love there. it. And uh, you're going with Luigi. I'm going with Luigi. I'm going to go with Tails then. Okay. I'm sure Tails uh, can, uh, can do some good jumps there. I hope he doesn't fly using his tails. <laughs> <laughs> so the way we play is we accelerate with A, and we have to uh, time our jumps well in order to get over the, the right. Everybody has their own technique, no, for fast <laughs> button pressing. So this is mine. I'm gonna be all hunched over here. Oh, <laughs> false start already. Oh gosh. Oh no. And here we go. This is a good start. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And now, so if you time your jump in the pink, you're having a perfect jump, and you actually keep accelerating a little bit, as you can oh. see, oh, but you can miss. <laughs> and if you jump in the yellow, your acceleration is just a little bit. Right. No, I don't like it that Filippo still sees me in his screen, <laughs> so I'm gonna go on, and now... Oh. Uh, last one. No, no, no. Peach, even <laughs> No, 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 I think you made it second. For yeah. the finish, All right. but you made it. You made All right, it. I made you it. made it. <laughs> Just by like, oh, almost like for One the finish second. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that Peach was running super fast in her in her dress. Of course. <laughs> Appropriate attire, uh, what you mean. Mm. Oh, well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Tails is yawning, but well. <laughs> uh, he's exhausted. It was a big oh, sprint. Right. Okay, so uh, actually, for uh, this uh, next uh, to the classic event, we're going to up a little bit the retro feel. Okay. And we're going to turn on the option of the analog, analog TV to on. Okay. And uh, we're actually going to go to the middle platform. Yeah, so one thing that's really nice about the 2D classic events is that it also includes some of the more uncommon um, Olympic events. So for instance, um, a 10 meter platform is a diving event. Right. And um, as you'll see, it's actually um, quite interesting how the, the take is because, um, okay, first let's choose the character. I'm definitely going with I Dr. Eggman. I love that you, I was just about to say the most appropriate character for this would be Dr. Eggman. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's all about aerodynamics and uh, <laughs> somersaults. So. And I want to see the, uh, I want to see you pitch as well in this one. And there you go. That's the analog TV filter with oh, scanlines. Yes, I can see. And also, um, there's some nice commentary going on, <laughs> so. So yeah, you select uh, between different dives with different levels of the difficulty. And uh, you have to be as fast as possible, because if you are fast, then you get uh, the possibility to add a multiplier, basically, right. to, your, to your dive. Yeah, and of course, diving is a jury sport, so you can see the, ju the judges. Oh, judge on the right. 
thought this is a pretty good, yeah, good it's score, a good actually. Score. I mean, yeah, I mean, touch on the rise I, I, a little bit harsh. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it was better than a six uh, <laughs> my dive, but uh, anyway. And but, you're totally uh, not biased, of course. <laughs> So as you both mentioned, the the buttons we're seeing there, it's like a, a a pattern of buttons you have to press. Exactly, and the what faster you press the them, the more time you have for um, doing some extra uh, moves for a uh, multiple. Right. Look how happy he is. Like that. <laughs> I'm loving it. He's so happy uh, to dive today. There we go. We One, two, three. And a rotate going for it. It's, uh, it looks beautiful. beautiful. Did you did you see the arms? They were really straight, <laughs> very straight into the water. I beautiful smile. That. Yes. I wrote then. Oh, oh po point five more. Than, look at that. Well, point five press. more than me. That multiplied <laughs> got to like uh, point I, seven. <laughs> point seven more than me. I'm happy with there. what I'm seeing. But of yeah. course now, um, you can do another elegant jump. Let's try. Actually, after starting oh, up. Wow. Oh, <laughs> okay. Can they recover? No! Oh. no. <laughs> I missed it. Oh. Big splash as well, you know, like just everything went wrong there. The and of course, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm being judged a bit harshly there. <laughs> well, not harshly, but I mean, it hurts still. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really loving the commentary that's happening in the background here. It's so Martin cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, focus. we're standing bit. Okay, we're standing Here's backwards. And a rotation. This should net a high score. This, very. This good. should net a high score. I agree. He's sure. got a big smile on his face. He knows he did good. Here we go. Still, the right, right most judge still. He you know. wants to be wowed today. I yeah. Think. Wow. <laughs> He's seen better. He's, He's seen, seen better. better. I'm sure wow. we can still impress them. Oh, wow. The crowd is we have four quietly. dives in total, so uh, Filippo has a chance for redemption now. Going for it. This should net a high so you see, the commercial. commands are getting a bit more complex, but it also means that the multiplier will get higher. Ah, right. If you're very fast at the beginning, then you get more chances at increasing the multiplier, which can oh, wow. really increase the score very by good. a lot. Even the right judge liked it. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> liked it, but still sad. You know, like, liked it, but... Uh, okay. Yeah. So, Chris, tell us a little bit about... So, the, the three patterns we've got here. So, yeah. is it... The further you go down, it's more of you taking a risk. Exactly. So, um, your base... Uh, complexity is higher, right? Uh, which means that if you get a good, uh, if you perform it well and you get a good multiplier, the chance of getting a super high score is also higher, right? But as you can see, um, the more good dives I'm doing, the more complex these sequences get, okay, and the more risk, of course, that I make a mistake. But okay. no risk, no glory. That's it. Oh, okay, okay, we go. going upside down. Oh, what an error! No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that his moustache is just yeah. like, bah! Like, uh. if, if you look down when he comes out of the water, it's like, it's all <laughs> freezed up, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> I, I liked how there was a rescue swimmer. In the yeah, pool. <laughs> it's like, okay, this Are went okay? so bad that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that uh. judge on the right was not impressed by that. All right, final dive. <laughs> final dive. So you see the question marks, this means that you're taking a gamble. You're testing your luck. Because you know you don't know what you're gonna get, but if you get the icon of your character, mm -hmm. you will get a very oh. easy sequence. Almost, that but can no. still get a, a very high score. Very strong form. Nice. This should net a add a going for it. Nice. Add a somersault. Wow. Very oh, good, Felipe. So good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What do the judges think? Wow. That's 94! Oh, That's a good score. I'm never gonna get that. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure, Chris. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, basking I'm just, I'm just, in the oh, glory. All these yeah. psychological just games basking going on. in the glory. Yeah. Okay, well, what there's only one chance, okay. and that is that I have to land Whoa. on my head. See, yeah. because it's at a disadvantage, it gets much more, right. uh, many more. Yes. Oh. Very good. Yeah. And now you can see it's still a long sequence, but it's an easier one. Right. Perfect. Multiplier is three. I'm impressed. Ten, 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 ten. What? Ten. what? <laughs> yes. <100. laughs> All right. This is not my day. You know, like uh, even if I do wow. well, even if I do well, that's just okay. All right. But but you know, completely well deserved there. <laughs> oh wow! I'm actually speechless. I don't <laughs> even know what to say. I was, I was just not, I was just holding my breath while doing it. <laughs> oh wow! All right. Okay. Okay. Even should that should judge I... on the right was like, "Yep, that's a ten." <laughs> ah, look at that smile. Yeah, look at the <laughs> look at the bounce. <laughs> he knows he did good today. Oh, good <laughs> but you know, right. there's always a chance for revenge. So, 
That's the, on the only thing I can get now is basically <laughs> just petty revenge. Basically. I tell you what, Flippo, you can choose the next event. I'm gonna go with long jump. I I love the uh, the way this game is played. All right. So in long jump, um, again, you have to first accelerate, uh -huh. and then um, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm gonna go with Bowser. I hope that uh, I'm gonna go with Tails. Just trying to see if I if we built a relationship yeah. now. <laughs> if you have a much more confidence. Yeah. So you have to accelerate and then at the end time the angle of your jump well. So we accelerate with A. And time the angle of our jump with B and Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Nice. Ooh. I, I, love that. I love how you, know you say what? that. I love how that appropriately chosen for a long jump, you choose someone with the smallest leg to foot Just speed ratio. <laughs> 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 Here we go. And. Oh. Point two difference. Wow. Whew. So, last one. Last <laughs> but not least. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, you got this. You know what? Ooh, look at those feet go! I'm my approach. I'm gonna go oh, no. for... Oh, no! no. no. Uh, I did a fire <laughs> jump! <laughs> wow, then look at the... <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bowser creates Just a crater. <laughs> He's got I, right I, I got a foul anyway, so you know, like we just, oh, we just oh, no. uh, yeah. I, I think I um, I started <laughs> jumping after the uh, the line there. <laughs> I had given up. Well, <laughs> I could jump though. Oh, tails is tired. Oh. <laughs> but no, doing no, doing the ceremonial like, wave, like oh, you know, like just uh, oh, throwing yes, shade there. Like, yeah. Oh right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more for the road. I mean, no no pressure, but this could be the decider. Yeah. Yeah. Quite literally <laughs> for the road. Yeah. So we go to marathon then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I love about the marathon is that um, it is really a very um, unconventional take on the marathon because normally the marathon, of course, is very long mm -hmm. and it takes a long time to complete. This will be the fastest marathon we will have ever ran. And my only <laughs> marathon that I will ever run. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you're a very good marathon supporter. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have friends that run marathon, and I just go there and cheer them on, and that's like uh, that, yeah, that's, that's it. That's you're my part, specialty. Yeah, you know, you're like, a part uh, of the marathon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, marathon final event. Let's go for Mario vs. Mario Sonic. Versus Sonic. Okay, sounds good. The athletes All right. are warmed up and ready. So and we, we have to Mario pay attention to our stamina. I love, by the way, the group start. <laughs> you know, typically in a marathon there. Yeah, and um, the marathon, it's a test of endurance, so it's all about managing your stamina and giving it a friendly <laughs> That's It's very sport friendly. <laughs> yeah, so you see on the right side, there's this blue bar that's now turned green for me, yeah. and that's the stamina gauge. So I see. every time you press A, you consume a bit of stamina, and you want to replenish it when you go past these water stations. And other than that, you want to manage it, because if you run out of stamina, you really slow down. Right. And you can see, I'm now in the slipstream of this group. Oh, hi, I Mario. see. And that means that I consume less stamina. Oh, oh, oh. oh wow. Oh, nice. I oh, no. Oh, no. Just the oh. moment you got it, I get it too. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Let's get that act together again. Oh, uh, Toad, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be... No, I fell. An no. struggle. That's good. I'm oh, so close! I'm gonna stick in the stamina. Oh no, I ran out of stamina! No! No. Oh, banana peels. Oh, can Mario do it? Ah, bees! This is this bees! <laughs> bees, banana peel water! Okay. <laughs> refreshing water has replenished my energy. Okay. So, you can see... Uh, that it's oh, very so tricky to keep your stamina up. And there's lots of obstacles as you guys are going along. Exactly. Oh, I completely missed it. So, also, you see this flag in the middle right side of the screen. Yeah. This is indicating how far we have until the finish line. Ah, right. And you see the number that's indicating the position that you currently have within the entire group of contestants. So, I'm currently 29th. No, I fell again. Six. I'm starting to oh, close in on the now, I hope. Because we're almost towards the end, so I'm gonna try to take a bit of risk and speed up. Oh! I'm completely out of stamina. Out of stamina, that's a good sound. Oh, look at this comeback! Oh, no, look there at this comeback! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Top 10! No! Oh. Final stretch! 
Come on. So close. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. I just oh. Oh. oh, guys. Well, neither of us will <laughs> won, but I think I'm still happy with the result. <laughs> I have to give you both a round of applause for that. That was, that was very good. Entertainment. I yes. like it. Well, the, <laughs> the marathon creates epic stories, of course. <laughs> but in general, um, what we wanted to get across today is that in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, um, you of course have the 3D events that we've come to know from the series, which offer a lot of fun that you can um, share with others in multiplayer. And on top of that, there are now the 2D classic events which are a drawback to the past and a beautiful homage to the Olympic Games that took place in Tokyo in 1964. And they do look very cool, I have to say. It was even the music I could hear and the commentary, I was just like, this is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the multiple cultural schemes, I think there's really something for everybody and for every play style, I think. Excellent. So guys, when is this game releasing? So Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 is coming out in Europe on November 8th. So it's not a very long wait. Not anymore. a very long wait. So I'm sure all the viewers who are watching at home are going to get get to play lots of these fantastic games and maybe we'll have some friendly competitiveness <laughs> happening as we, as we just had lots of fun here. So thank you so much, Chris. And thank you so much, Filippo. We uh, really appreciate you guys showing us this game today. And for everybody watching at home, this was Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. We hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you all very soon. See you soon. Bye. 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 Hello and welcome everyone. We are in Cologne at Gamescom 2019 and today Nintendo presents a more in-depth look at Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Joining us today we have two very special guests. We have the creator of the Dragon Quest series, Mr. Hori. Hello Mr. Hori, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> and we have the, pro the producer of this particular chapter, in uh, the Dragon Quest series, Mr. Okamoto. Hello, Hi. Mr. Okamoto. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> uh, alongside our special guests, we have from Nintendo of Europe, Filippo. Hey, Filippo. Hi, Nims. Hi, everyone. Now, Filippo, you're going to be taking us through some gameplay and showcasing some new uh, areas in this particular title. Yes, we want to travel a bit through all, many of the locations of uh, Dragon Quest XI S. Excellent. And we have Mina. Hi, Mina. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Mina is also from Nintendo of Europe and is going to be our interpreter for yes. today. Awesome. So I think we should just get straight into this game. Now, Mr. Hori, mm -hmm. could you give us and for the viewers watching at home a brief introduction into uh, the story for this particular installment in the Dragon Quest series? では、まずホリーさん本タイトルのストーリーについて簡単にご紹介いただけますかそうですね。あの本作は勇者の物語です。山奥の村で育った主人公は自分が勇者であることを知らされてで王様に会いに行くんですけども王様は彼はお前は悪魔の子だって言われ追われることになりますでどうしてそういうことになったかの謎を解くために仲間と一緒に世界を旅することになるん
and I'm going to burn this little rubber rabbit. Oh no! Yes! <laughs> So yeah, there are uh, a lot of ways to customize uh, your characters and to employ different strategies in battle. But I'm just gonna go into a second fight for now. Oh, oh you caught his attention. Yes. <laughs> so, um, as you were explaining there, Filippo, a bit about the battle style in this particular title, Mr. Hori, mm -hmm. could you tell us why did you stick to the traditional turn-based battle style system for this, for this game? え、ホリさんドラゴンクエストのゲームで単性のバトルを採用し続けているアクションベースバトルそう、if my character has fallen, so you can attack this turn, but then we can go uh, visit uh, Gallopolis a little bit later. I'm actually just going to try to use Bang, which attacks all of the enemy party for big explosion there. <laughs> Very Serena nice. is always helping me out. So Veronica, sorry, is always helping me out <laughs> in battle. So now we can uh, actually go inside uh, Gallopolis. And uh, as you travel through the world of Dragon Quest XI S, you will see all of these locations that are actually inspired by real world location. You can uh, immediately see also from the outside. And for the fact that we are also in this desertic uh, area, Gallopolis has uh, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern influence and inspiration. And uh, now that we get inside, I hope that I can show you that. But I think it's very clearly visible from the very start. Ah, wow. You can see, yeah, you can immediately see the influences, the architecture uh, inspired by uh, Middle Eastern locations, the domes, the arches, the decorations. The palm trees, of course. <laughs> um, there is this uh, souk style market oh, yes, that over is very there. Souk. With, and uh, like even like this pattern, this decoration, like the geometric the arch, patterns. Yeah, 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 for sure. Really nice. Uh, this uh, circus actually plays a role in the in the storyline, and also has this beautiful Middle Eastern inspired decoration. Oh also the feathered. That yeah, is exactly. very cool. <laughs> exactly, and uh, also if you look at that, uh, the Egyptian inspired uh, statues, the obelisk. Uh, it's really all a lot of different influences from the Middle East in one city. There seems to be a lot of inspiration in this particular area. So, Mr. Hori, how did you find uh, inspiration to create these sort of environments? Have you traveled through these locations or locations like this yourself personally? And um, what would you, how would you say this has influenced you in when making games like this? Like, or making a city like Galopolis? で、Yes, um, I myself have traveled to many countries and I get inspirations from all over the place. And when we were uh, developing Dragon Quest III, we actually went to Egypt to see ah. real pyramids. And for the development of this game, Dragon Quest XI, the development team uh, all together went to Machu Picchu. And uh, the scenery that you see in cobblestone at the start of this game is inspired from that time. We are very, 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 very yeah, well, I can say you traveled a lot more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, it is a really beautiful world and uh, we want to show more of it. So now we're moving out of Gallopolis to travel a little bit more. And here, normally in the previous versions of the game, uh, you could travel by horse, but you would always need to use these uh, belts that are usually outside cities or on s near save points to call your horse. In the Nintendo Switch version of the game, actually, uh, you can simply press a button and we have a new item, a bell called the Horse Ailer, 
that uh, can just, uh, uh, just summons our horse wherever we are in the world. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. For some more uh, uh, easy travel. Actually, um, as we uh, gallop, we can also trample enemies. Small oh, no. enemies. <laughs> <That> poor guy. <laughs> Of course, bigger enemies would uh, trigger a fight or higher level enemies. You can actually see in the distance as I'm, uh, as I'm uh, traveling that the heat waves are kind of uh, oh, uh, yes. deforming the image, like yeah. the heat uh, distortion thing, which I find uh, really cool and again fits, of course, the desert theme very well. Now, uh, I'm approaching a campsite and that's what I want to show. Uh, in this campsite, you can, of course, rest, make a camp. You can do many things, though, in, uh, in, uh, in each camp. Uh, of course, you see your characters, uh, uh, your party members over there. They're actually not always sitting in the same way. Every time you go to a camp, they might be sitting in a different way. It's ah, pretty okay. cool. You can uh, buy items, you can save your game, uh -huh. and you can f use your fun-sized forge for your <laughs> item crafting needs. A, a fun-sized forge. <laughs> yes, I mean, you can see it is, uh, is fun-sized. But again, also uh, exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version of the game, there is another item there, the fun-sized forge. <laughs> uh, so again, also for this, you can uh, craft items wherever you are now. You don't need to be at uh, a camp to use oh, the forge. I see. Which, for example, maybe you know, you're in a dungeon, you see you're not strong enough, uh, you want to craft uh, a sword <laughs> uh, quickly to, uh, to become a bit more powerful and, uh, and try on the action. But yeah, as I said, then you can also talk to, your car to the party members that talk to you about the storyline and what's happening right now. Excellent. So, Filippo, this is your particular party, your at crew moment, at the moment. Yes. So, Mr. Okamoto, with Filippo's party he has right now, could you tell us a little bit more about each of these current party members? で、ゴモトさん現在のパーティーメンバーについて少しご紹介いただけますか。はい、えっと、青色の髪の色をした青年が神という the blue haired one here is called Eric. He has committed a serious crime in the past. And by traveling with the luminary, he hopes to atone his sins. Okay. はい。え、ゲームをプレイしてですね、その謎というかを解いてもらえればなと思います。And the two girls here, the one in the red dress is called Veronica and the one in green is called Serena. Uh, these two are sisters who are helping the luminary. And um, the smaller one, Veronica, looks like the younger sister, but there's actually a bit of a secret behind this. Ah, so I okay. hope you can find this out by playing the game. It's holding on to those secrets, yes. Mr. Akamoto, <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I particularly like uh, um, Veronica's personality because uh, she's like, uh, she's not going to, you know, like, uh, uh, ease out. Like, she's going to make jokes. She's going to like, tease the character. Oh, okay. She's quite a funny character. Okay. <laughs> すごいいっぱい喋ってくれてるんで、このまま続きで、あの陽気な服のシルビアというキャラクターについてもフィリッポさんの方から説明してもらいましょうかね。And <笑> in your party when you fight. Uh, he's uh, an artist, a uh, multi-talented artist. He actually comes from that uh, circus that we saw in uh, Gallopolis. And uh, let's say he's just as good with swords as he, with, as he is with words. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was good. <laughs> good use of wordplay there. I like that, Filippo. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying. You know more about the characters than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> okay, let us rest uh, until dawn and uh, on the sunrise we can move on to our uh, next uh, section and actually for this next section i'm not going to use my horse i'm going to actually travel uh, via magic i'm using zoom which is a teleport magic that allows you to see, visit locations that you have been to before and uh, um, what we're doing now is the keeping the theme of riding, like instead of riding the horse, 
we can ride uh, monsters in this game. Okay. Uh, sometimes you have to do it, for example, in dungeons to uh, go over certain obstacles or you are required to do it in certain story uh, beats. But uh, in the Nintendo Switch version of the game, there are new and exclusive uh, rideable monsters uh, which are super cute. We actually have already shown this particular one at E3, but you know, I just want to make sure that everybody okay. looks <laughs> at the awesomeness that is the Slime Knight. Ah, right. There we go. <laughs> and uh, as we are in another fight, I'm going to uh, show you also a few more items, a few more, um, a few more changes to the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So uh, first and foremost, we can uh, increase the battle speed. Uh, the ultra fast speed is completely new for the Nintendo Switch version of the game. And if you fight a lot of battles, if you really want, you know, level up to the maximum possible level, you're gonna you're gonna fight a lot. <laughs> so the fast speed uh, will help you. If you look at the bouncing <laughs> of the slimes on the slime night, okay. you can immediately see if I change speed now. <laughs> they're a little bit more active there. They so. look super happy now. Yes. <laughs> Something else you can do. Actually, you can change your lineup as well. So I have four active party members in battle, but I have a total of five. No? So we want to give Silvando his, uh, his time in the spotlight, of course. Right. And we can move him ah. here. And in real time, without using, losing any turn, there you go, uh, your uh, uh, lineup changes. On top of that, you can also give orders to your character. So now everybody is set to follow orders, okay. which means they just uh, take my commands. Right. But uh, you can individually change orders to uh, a single character, or you can tell everyone, for example, in this case, to show no mercy. <laughs> and show no mercy just means that they will just go do everything they can <laughs> to destroy the enemies as fast as possible. And the AI actually is pretty good at uh, uh, finding the best move to suit, uh, that suits your strategy and the orders that you give them. It's uh, really quite nice. Now that uh, I don't have to worry too much about the commands, <laughs> for example, we can uh, focus on listening to the orchestrated soundtrack. And uh, uh, again, the orchestrated soundtrack is completely new for the, uh, this version of the game. It's only on Nintendo Switch. On top of that, uh, you can also hear sometimes the character uh, uh, talking during battle. Uh, they make explanation, they talk to the enemies, they talk to each other. Uh, of course, uh, the storyline is all voiced. Uh, here in battles, you, we are hearing the English voices, mm -hmm. but also exclusive to Nintendo Switch version of the game for the first time anywhere, uh, we have Japanese voices as well. Ah. So you can play the entire game with Japanese voiceover as well. I'm too. sure many fans watching at home will be very excited to hear that. Yes, but then this is what we came here for. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, look at that. <laughs> there you go. That's a slime night. Oh. And uh, uh, I love the fact that uh, of course, the slime is happy and smiling, <laughs> uh, as usual. The slime knight, they're a bit less... Oh, oh actually, no! <laughs> they, wanted to, they wanted to save, his, save their oh, friends, no. actually. <laughs> but I think we're gonna make short work of them anyway. <laughs> like the great sword attacks of uh, Elf 11, our character. By the way, yeah, we called it Elf because it's in German, 11. And uh, the Luminary is also known as 11. Very well thought out there, Felipe. Yes. I like that. <laughs> and we leveled up as well. So, not, to, not too bad, actually. Yeah. I'm not too mad at these Slime Knights. <laughs> so anyway, like you see the Slime Knight holding on for their life, and you're actually using the sword and the shield of uh, the Slime Knight. So I'm trying to show you that, for example, here, just like with the horse, you can trample small enemies. Ah, with right. the Slime Knight, you can use the sword to, uh, uh, to defeat smaller enemies. And course. careful to not get too close because you're going to obviously another battle. Yes, of course. Yeah, you have to <laughs> learn each ride, each uh, different monster ride has a bit of a different uh, movement speed, uh, different uh, uh, abilities they have. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of learn a bit how to use them. Right. So now for our uh, next adventure, actually it's beautiful. We see just uh, uh, Puerto Valor, uh, Puerto Valor over there, which is another city. We're not gonna go there. Just okay. Yet. We're gonna go somewhere else, <laughs> but it is definitely a nice place, inspired <laughs> by Spain. Ah. Uh, and what actually I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom to yet another area of the game. And uh, as I said, as you travel through this world, there is really a sense of adventure. Uh, you see all of this location. It feels alive. Um, I'm going now to one of my favorite locations. Uh, I am, I'm Italian, so this is the uh, location that is inspired ah, okay. by Italy. I see, I see. <laughs> and uh, it is uh, called uh, Gondolia. 
so okay. I'm pretty sure that uh, Italian viewers out there already know uh, <laughs> what the, the city looks like. <laughs> Where the inspiration comes from, I yes. see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now that we get into the city, if you have uh, ever been to Venice, ah. you will uh, recognize you will recognize the city, the architecture, more like uh, uh, bricks. For example, the beautiful uh, red uh, houses there, all of those looks, people dressed in uh, uh, like maritime clothes, <laughs> like sailors. Uh, um, there is also like uh, the tents over there and uh, there are like clothes hanging from clothes lines. Uh, oh, wow. uh, <laughs> across, uh, you know, uh, hanging across buildings. It's really, really <laughs> beautiful. And uh, actually, uh, what I love, apart from, as I said, the appropriate clothing, uh, here characters have uh, uh, used Italian words while they speak, for example. So, povero me here means poor me. Oh. <laughs> uh, and if I speak to this guy, actually, I think he will say something I say quite often, which is uffa, uh, which is what we say when we are a bit annoyed. Do like, you know uh, what? I feel like I've heard you say that before. <laughs> you, mo you most probably have. <laughs> It's really interesting that these there's different uh, accents and stuff happening in different yeah. areas. Mr. Okamoto, can you tell us a bit more about these unique characteristics uh, of the different areas? Okamoto so as you see now in Gondolia, people speak with Italian words and Italian accents. And as you saw before in Galopolis, people speak with a bit of a Middle Eastern accent. Ah, right. And we're not showing the village today, but in a Japanese-inspired village called Hotto, people speak in haiku style, so in 575 five rhythms. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> So over 30 years ago, when I started making uh, my games, computers were seen as very cold machines. And I wanted to add warmth to these machines. So I would add these fun graphics and fun wordplay all over the game. And I'm very happy to see that even in the overseas localized versions, you can still see these fun wordplay in all over the game. It's, I mean, it's definitely visible in this title. And I just want to say that the game app looks absolutely stunning. It's so colorful and it really feels like you're going on such a, a journey in this game. So thank you so much for, to both of you. Uh, you. You smile like a, like a slime, basically, <laughs> when you play Dragon Quest, because everything's so colorful and so happy. <laughs> Even the monsters that you defeat, they're usually funny. Like, <laughs> speaking of puns, one of my favorite monsters in the Dragon Quest games is uh, um, a wizard that is a cat. And so it's called ah. Meowgician <laughs> in English, which of course makes perfect sense. Do we, do we know what, what the, the Japanese name for that is, Mr. Okamoto? Nekomado. Nekomado. It's there's also a pun in the Japanese. Oh, name right, I well. see. <laughs> I'm sure fans who obviously understand Jap Japanese will understand that pun. <laughs> yeah, puns are hard to. Translate yeah. one to one, of yeah. course. <laughs> so actually, we want to show uh, something else here. Um, you can, of course, play the whole game in this beautiful 3D uh, rendered location with all of these colors. But uh, for the first time in the West, taken from the Japanese uh, 3DS version of the game, uh, there you can play the entire game in 2D mode. Uh, wow. And in, in, in the West, uh, uh, outside of Japan, the Nintendo Switch version of the game is the first and only version that has this possibility. And uh, we want to show a bit of that now. Oh, I'm very excited to see this. So uh, you're gonna, you're, are you going into, you're going to change? Into yes. Basically, you have to save uh, your game and then you restart from a story chapter. Oh, I see. Um, from a story chapter into the 2D world. I, okay. So, Mr. Hori, why did you decide to include both 2D and 3D modes in this particular installment? 
堀井さん、本タイトルに 2D、3D、両方を入れようと思った理由はなぜでしょうかそうですねあの、昔作った時は本当にコンピューターの性能がそれほど良くなかったんで、2D しか表せなかったんですね、でももう今や 3D が当たり前のことになってるけども、やっぱりその 2D が良かったって人もいるんで、その歴史を感じ,あの感じたためにですね、2D、3D、両方で遊べるモードを入れたんですね。So,、um, when I first made、uh, Dragon Quest games,、uh, the graphics on the computers were not so good. So, we only had 2D. And now, after all these years, it's taken for granted that these games are in 3D. But I do have comments from my fans that 2D is also good, or、uh, people like to feel the nostalgia in the games. So, that is why we have included both 2D and 3D in this title. I see. And speaking of nostalgia, as you just said, I'm feeling very nostalgic、There、looking at this right now. This looks absolutely <laughs> amazing. It feels very nostalgic.、Yes. <laughs> There you go. Classic sprites.、Uh, I love the sprite work. I love it. It's still very colorful. You can still, you know, you can recognize all of the characters in their、uh, sprite version. And actually, I'm going to、uh, zoom back to Gondolia so that we can maybe, you know, make the comparison between what we just saw in 3D and the 2D version. So I love the,、oh, wow. the map, of course. By the way, there are random encounters in the 2D version. In the 3D version, all the monsters are visible in, in, the, in the map. In the、right. 2D version, again, to keep tradition, you have your random encounters. Oh, I see. And I love the characters being as big as the city in the <laughs> yeah, overworld map, of course,、exactly. which is quite typical. You know, <laughs> if you played uh, games, uh, Dragon Quest games, for example, on Super Nintendo, that's the, exactly the way they look. <laughs> so we've gone back into Gondolia. Yeah, we're in Gondolia now. And that, it, it looks very much. You have the canals, you have the houses,、uh, you have、uh, all of the people speaking Italian. It's really, it's really uh, uh, almost one to one.、Uh, it, lo it looks so cool.、Uh, Mr. Okamoto, what was the biggest challenge in making the world of this game both 3D and 2D?、Um, what, bes well, besides obviously the time it would take to make both <laughs> worlds, what would you say represented the biggest challenge for you? 岡本さんこの 2D、3D 両方でゲームを作るにあたってあのもちろん時間はすごくかかったと思うのですがそれ以外の課題はどのようなものがありましたか2個あってですねまずはあのマップのサイズ感の部分なんですけれどあの 3D と 2D とやっぱり同じ街だって印象を持ってもらわないといけないのでどこをシンプルにどこを分かりやすくするかみたいなところであの簡略化するべきところとちゃんと描くところとって。いう部分の区分けをするっていうところが難しかったですね。まあ、距離感とかも含めてなんですけど。Well, one thing is the size of the cities and these maps.、Uh, so for the sizes,、uh, it's completely different in 2D and 3D. I see. So we had to make some changes to、uh, where to simplify or where to actually make into detail. Okay. And also make some adjustment to the distances the characters have to walk through. I see. 二個目はあのやっぱりイベントシーンとかであのキャラクターのえー、感情だったりとか動きっていうのを 3D はやっぱりリッチに伝えられるんですけれど 2D はシンプルにしか伝えられないのでそういうところをテキストで、えー、補っていったりした結果あの 2D と 3D のテキストが別物になってしまって二重管理をすることになってしまったというのが非常に大変でした。<笑> And another thing is that for the event scenes in 3D, you can see the facial expressions and you can really see the emotions of the characters quite easily. But in 2D, you only have very, very simple movements, <laughs> as you can see. see. <laughs> and、uh, we had to add some text to the 2D version to explain the exact、ah. same event. So in the end, we had to manage two completely different texts for the exact same event scene. So that was quite hard to manage on our side. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Even the characters here in, in,、uh, in Gondolia they have additional text、uh, in the 2D version. Like, this is the Ufa guy from before. He had a, a little bit more text than before. One thing I wanted to point out I was riding gondolas before,、uh -huh. uh, and these are the 2D gondolas, <laughs> <laughs> which of course they keep the retro feel and the sprite feel.、Uh, anyway, both in 2D and in 3D,、uh, riding gondolas in Gondolia is much cheaper than doing so in、okay. <laughs> Well, guaranteed. <laughs> I'll take your word for it being Italian, Filippo. <laughs> Anyway, we are now going to another location, the last、uh, location we want to show in this、uh, presentation, and this is、uh, Tickington. Tickington is a very special place.、Uh, it's、uh, the place where、uh, the Tuckle reside. These are these uh, white uh, spirit kind of characters. I think we have one 
over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a topo. Exactly. You see them all over the world of uh, Dragon Quest XI S. <laughs> and uh, uh, they allow you to uh, do something very special. Uh, <coughs> if you go into this room, there are all of these books, and all of these books, they take you to uh, different Dragon Quest games. They, uh, you ah. can see a snippet of past Dragon Quest games. Ah, that's, that's interesting. Mr. Hori, in many Dragon Quest games, you've included the possibility to travel to different worlds of, of previous games. Could you tell us why is that, and what gave you the inspiration to do so? で、ホリーさん、あの、ドラゴンクエストのゲームの多くで過去作に旅ができるっていう機能が含まれていますが、このようにしているのはなぜでしょうか。そうですね。あの、歴代のドラゴンクエストをプレイした人にとってのなんか
So, um, if you play the demo <laughs> version or the main game of Dragon Quest XI S, you can get a spirit of Toko in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Okay, so oh, you can use wow. the spirit, spirit mode. Okay, that's really cool. Very it's cool. If you get it, there will be a release date on Nintendo's side. Please wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. In terms of the release date, yeah, it's not been decided, not been announced yet. So, I hope you look forward to it. <laughs> so the uh, addition of uh, spirits in uh, Super Smash Brothers has not been announced yet, but what we know is that we have a release date for uh, uh, Dragon Quest XI S. Yes. Echoes of an Elusive Age <laughs> Definitive Edition, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, um, there is also something else that you can say. On the uh, 27th of September, when uh, the game launches, there will also be a uh, Champions Pack as a free DLC that uh, will uh, uh, give you, will unlock uh, clothing uh, and items for your characters that you can just get day one as soon as the game releases as well. So there's lots of exciting stuff happening for Dragon Quest fans and yes. anybody who's new to the series, there's lots of stuff to be checking out very soon. Um, Mr. Okamoto, Mr. Hori, are there any final remarks you'd like to leave for the viewers who are watching at home about this new title? あ、最後に何かメッセージはございますかあ、はい。えっと、改めてですね、この今回のドラゴンクエスト11は2Dも3Dも入っている両方楽しめる作品になっていますし、音楽もボイスも切り替えられて、あの、自分の好きな形で